Hello friends, it's Christy Marcotte. Scrapbook.com just released their birthday collection and there are so many fun products. Scrapbook.com has a fun new collection called Birthday. Here's a quick peek at some of the products that are part of the collection. There's a new pattern paper pad called Birthday. This is A2 size. It includes 40 sheets, five sheets of each pattern, and all of the papers are double-sided. I'll flip through it quickly so you can get an idea of what's included. The paper is a nice heavy weight, 230 GSMs. I love all the cheerful designs and patterns, and this collection is perfect for making birthday cards for all ages. I'll flip it around so you can see the patterns on the back side. There are several designs that have a solid on the back side of the pattern. So there's the dark blue, here's a lovely teal, and the solid colors match beautifully with the pattern designs. There are several tone-on-tone -tone patterns, this lovely yellow with stars. This paper is fun with all the different candles. Here's another solid in a pretty pink, and one more solid in orange. There's also a new smooth cardstock collection called Sprinkles, and it's available in the 6x8 size along with the A2 size. Both paper pads include 40 sheets, five sheets of each color. And it also has a nice heavyweight cardstock, just a little bit lighter than the pattern paper. It's 210 GSMs. I love adding cardstock layers to my cards, and scrapbook.com's smooth cardstock packs are the perfect weight. I forgot to open the paper pad before recording the video, so once I remove the little stickers on the side, I'll flip through all the beautiful colors. There's a bright yellow, orange, bright pink, purple, a light pink, this lovely blue, sort of a mint green, and a darker green. The next item is a sentiment stamp set called Happy Birthday, and there are also coordinating dies. There's a die to go around every single word or sentiment on the Happy Birthday set. And bonus, you don't have to snip apart the dies. If you're looking for a fun assortment of birthday sentiments, this is the perfect set. There's a nice variety of different size sentiments. And there is one other die set, I forgot to show it at the beginning. It's the Hooray Happy Birthday Word Set. And I will show that here a little bit later on in the video. And if you are interested in any of the products, I do have links in the description box below. I also wanted to show scrapbook.com's brand new large size stack and sort tray. They've had the smaller size available and recently they released the large size and it's basically double the size of the regular size and you can stack the smaller trays on top. I think it'll be perfect for putting all of the A2 card pieces in the larger tray and some of the smaller die cut pieces in the smaller tray. I do have some cards to share with you using the new birthday collection. I will be using some card sketches for inspiration. For card number one, this sketch is from Sugar Pea Designs. This is Sugar Sketch number 23. And if you are interested in any of the sketches I use in this video, I share all of that information on my coordinating blog post. That link is in the description box below or you can simply head over to christymarcott.com. For my first card, I selected the fun sprinkle pink pattern paper for the background. I'm layering it on some of the purple cardstock. Across the center, I added a strip of pink cardstock and also added a vellum banner, just for that little extra detail. I've already stamped and cut out the sentiment, happy birthday. I use Catherine Pooler's Sugared Lavender Ink Color. It coordinates nicely with the purple cardstock. I'll be popping up this sentiment using scrapbook.com's one millimeter foam. This is my favorite foam dimension. They released it just a couple months ago and I'm already on my second roll. 
I love that you can add just that little bit of dimension without a lot of bulk. But if you prefer a thicker dimension, they also have their foam available in the two millimeter and three millimeter thickness. Using more of the purple and pink cardstock, I'll cut two small banners and adhere them in the upper left hand corner. I'm using pink cardstock for the longer banner, and before attaching the purple banner on top, I'll put a small scrap piece of cardstock on the right side of the pink banner. That way, when I add the purple banner, the right side doesn't dip down. The liquid adhesive I'm using is Barely Art Glue. For embellishments, I'm using Lawn Fawn's Sparkle Garland Border Die Set. There are two different sizes of the sparkle stars, and I cut them out using Scrapbook.com's Holographic Mirror Paper Pack. I selected one of the silver holographic designs, so they're super sparkly. I will pop them up with some foam dimension, just cutting some small pieces of the one millimeter foam. I'll put two stars in the upper left hand corner on the banners and three in the lower right hand corner underneath the sentiment. On scrapbook.com's website, they have a coming soon section and listed under there, there are more sizes of the one millimeter foam. There are small squares, small circles, narrow strips, and I think a few other options. I'm really excited to get those. Then I don't have to cut down the foam roll. So there is my finished card, and this is card number one. For card number two, the card sketch is from Sketch Saturday. This is number 591. I selected two pattern papers, this fun balloon paper for the background and a teal polka dot paper for the narrow strip on the left side of the card. I'll layer that piece and the background on some of the light teal cardstock. The tape runner I'm using in this video is from scrapbook.com. It's their deluxe adhesive roller. For the narrow one inch strip that goes across the card using some of the light pink cardstock, I'll put adhesive on the back and add my card front onto a card base. All of my cards in this video are American Standard A2 size four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. Next, I'll add the two inch teal polka dot strip on the right side of the card. For a sentiment, I've already stamped and cut this out using happy birthday and also yippee. The ink color I used is Catherine Pooler's Skylight. It coordinates nicely with this teal card stock. Using the coordinating sentiment die, I cut out a second piece from some silver holographic paper by scrapbook.com. I'll layer the sentiment on the holographic piece, offsetting it slightly so you can see some of that beautiful sparkle holographic color underneath the sentiment. Then I'll flip it over, pop it up with some one millimeter foam. I'm cutting some small pieces to make sure I have good coverage on the back side. I'll also be adding more of the sparkle stars, and I use the same silver holographic paper. I'll put foam dimension on the back. I'll add the sentiment happy birthday down first and yippee underneath more on the right side. It's fun to have the different sentiments on the happy birthday stamp set that you can mix and match together. For embellishments, I'll add the two small sparkle stars following the design of the card sketch. So there is my finished card, and this is card number two. I love how this card turned out. I think the papers look so pretty together. For card number three, the card sketch is from Sweet Sunday. This is number 204. I selected two pattern papers. I have the color burst for the background, and the smaller rectangle features the yellow star tone-on-tone -tone pattern paper. I'll layer that piece on some vellum, I didn't want to bring in any other colors, and the vellum adds just that little subtle touch. For the three narrow strips that go behind on the left side of the card, using more of the holographic paper, this time the gold star paper, super sparkly. I'll put adhesive on the back of the larger yellow panel and attach the three gold strips on the left side of the card. Then I'll put adhesive on the back and add this piece on the background pattern paper. I'll layer that background piece on some of the blue cardstock. 
put adhesive on the back and add my card front onto a card base. For most of my cards, the background pattern paper piece is five and a quarter inches by four inches. Sometimes I'll make it a little bit smaller or a little bit larger. For a sentiment, I'll be adding the word happy birthday. And this is using the die set that I forgot to show at the beginning. This is the Hooray Happy Birthday word die set. It includes the words happy birthday and hooray, an outline piece, and a second piece for a shadow. I love having the drop shadow behind the sentiment. And this set includes the drop shadow piece along with the outline. I'm using orange cardstock for the words, the bright yellow cardstock for the drop shadow, and the background shadow piece, I use some white pearlescent cardstock. To layer the drop shadow behind the word, I find it easier to line it up flush on the very left side. Then you'll have the fun drop shadow underneath the sentiment and on the right side. There's even a little drop shadow for the dot of the eye. This is where my stack and sort tray comes in handy. I can keep all those tiny die cut pieces in the tray and I don't have to worry about losing it. Once I have the two words together, I'll add them on the white outline piece. Final touch, dotting the eye. The fun thing about the word die set, you don't have to use all three layers. You could use just the word, you could do the word and the drop shadow, or you could use the word with the outline piece. Lots of different options. I will pop up the sentiment using the one millimeter foam. Make sure to get good coverage so there isn't one area that sags. Then I'll remove the release paper and add the sentiment happy birthday on the center of the yellow star pattern paper. For a final finishing touch, I'll add a small present die cut. This is from scrapbook.com's Winter Wishes die set. There are three different sizes of presents plus some adorable critters. I did use this collection in a previous video and I'll link it at the end of this video. I'm using the medium size present. I cut it out from the same blue cardstock. And for the bow, I'm using some gold mirror paper from scrapbook.com. I'll glue the two pieces together, then I'll flip over the present, pop it up with some foam dimension, remove the release paper, and add the present on the right side of the sentiment. So there is my finished card, and this is card number three. For card number four, the card sketch is from Cards TV. This is sketch number 13. I selected three different pattern papers using the fun party hats for the background, adding a strip of this confetti paper on the left side. I have the pink sprinkle paper and some of the yellow solid for the small squares. And I'm layering everything on the dark blue solid pattern paper. I love mixing and matching different pattern papers. If many of the designs are fairly busy, you can always add a wider cardstock layer. That'll help it stand out against the busy pattern paper. The layers for the two smaller squares are an additional fourth of an inch, while the layers for the strip on the left side and the background piece, I'm adding an additional eighth of an inch. So they are a fairly narrow border. I'll put adhesive on the back, add my card front onto a card base, and here's where you can see an eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. Now I'll add the confetti piece on the left side. Before adding the pink sprinkle pattern paper piece, I'll put a scrap piece of cardstock on the very right side where it goes off of the confetti paper. Then I'll do the same thing behind the yellow square this time putting it at the bottom portion. And that'll help keep everything at the same level and there won't be that noticeable dip when it goes off all those other layers. You could also use foam dimension to help level out those different layers, but since I always have a ton of scrap card stock, I prefer to use that first. I've already stamped and cut out the sentiment, yay, let's eat cake. I'll put foam dimension on the back using the same one millimeter foam. I almost always use very thin foam. Since I donate a lot of my cards, 
I don't want the organization to have to pay additional postage to mail off the card. Once I have good coverage, I'll remove the release paper and add both of the sentiments inside the yellow square. For embellishments, I'll be adding more of the Lawn Fawn Sparkle Stars. Cut them out from the silver holographic paper and I will add a small piece of foam dimension on the back. I'll put two of the stars in the upper left hand corner and one on the right side of the sentiment. So there is my finished card, and this is card number four. I forgot to mention the ink color I use for the sentiment is Catherine Pooler's Drive-In. It matches the dark blue beautifully. Now moving on to card number five. I'm using the fun present pattern paper for the background, and I'll layer it several times. First on some green cardstock, then on some vellum. The vellum will add just that little extra detail. Then I'll layer that piece on some orange cardstock. And I'm making sure not to put any adhesive where it'll be visible through the vellum. My vellum layer was just a little bit too long on one side, so I did go and trim that off. I'll put adhesive on the back and add my card front onto a card base. All of the solid cardstock I'm using in this video is from scrapbook.com. And I try to use mostly the solids from the birthday and also the sprinkles collection. I'll be adding a wide panel of blue cardstock. This is two and three fourths of an inch. I also have a piece of green cardstock and I cut a little hillside using scrapbook.com's easy grip ergonomic scissors. I'll adhere the hillside on the bottom of the blue cardstock piece and adhere it to the card. I've already gone ahead and cut out a bunch of die cuts and these are from the Winter Wishes collection. I also stamped and cut out the sentiment Happy Birthday. I have foam dimension on the back. I'll remove the release paper and adhere the sentiment on the left side of the blue panel with part of it going on the present pattern paper. One of my favorite images from the Winter Wishes die set is this sweet little fox. I use two different shades of brown cardstock for the fox's body and tail. And the two brown colors are from scrapbook.com's Neutral Smooth Cardstock Paper Pad. And for the fox's chest and tip of the tail, I'm using some cream cardstock. And this is a scrap piece of cardstock from my stash. There are a couple of tiny pieces, the eye and the nose. I'll first add a drop of Barely Art glue, and I'm picking up those teeny tiny pieces with an embellishment wand. The fox will also have a sweet little bow tie. I use some of the yellow cardstock. This card will also be featuring three of the presents, and these are also from the Winter Wishes die set. I use the yellow star tone on tone pattern paper for the larger present and the light pink and orange cardstock for the smaller presents. For the ribbon and bows, I use some of the gold holographic paper. Even just that tiny bit of the holographic paper adds a lovely sparkle and shine to the presents. After all three presents are assembled, I'll flip them over, put foam dimension on the back, and I'll also be popping up the fox with the same one millimeter foam dimension. Since I am using some specialty paper for the ribbon and bows, I'm pressing down on them just a little bit more to make sure the glue has adhered. Now I'll put foam dimension on the back, cutting some small pieces so I have good coverage. And I'll need to cut some teeny tiny pieces of the foam to put behind some of the areas of the fox. Once I've added all the foam dimension, I'll remove the release paper and first adhere the fox in the lower right hand corner. He'll be sitting on the green hillside looking up at the happy birthday sentiment. His face is just so sweet. Now I'll add the three presents on the left side of the fox, starting with the larger present on the very left side the pink medium sized present on the right and the small orange present in the middle. For a final finishing touch, I'll add a small green banner in the upper right hand corner. I have a scrap piece of the green cardstock. 
First cut a fishtail on the bottom, then cut the right side in slightly at an angle, flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Then I'll put glue on the back and adhere it in place. So there is my finished card and this is card number five. Now moving on to card number six and this is my final card. I'm using the fun birthday candle pattern paper for the background. Now this was an A2 size piece. I did trim it down about an eighth of an inch so I could have a blue cardstock layer. I'll put adhesive on the back and add my card front onto a card base. Next I'll add an oval die cut. I use scrapbook.com's nested ovals die set and some white pearlescent cardstock. I'll adhere it in place with some glue. For an image, I pulled out the Sweet Scoops die set. I love this fun ice cream cone, and I thought it would be perfect for a birthday card. I used brown cardstock for the cone and light pink cardstock for the ice cream. The brown cardstock is from scrapbook.com's Neutrals Smooth Cardstock Paper Pad. I'll first adhere that waffle design on the cone, then adhere the pink ice cream scoop. To make sure those two pieces stay together, I'll put some double-sided adhesive tape on the back side. I'm using the fourth of an inch tape from scrapbook.com. I'm adding a small piece to hold the cone and the scoop of ice cream together. Now I'll pop up the ice cream cone using the one millimeter foam. Make sure to get good coverage. Add that tiny piece at the very tip of the cone. I'll remove the release paper and add the ice cream cone in the center of the oval. And I can't forget the cherry. Instead of a red cherry, I'm adding a pink cherry. I've already stamped the sentiment happy birthday on some of the green cardstock. I'll cut a fishtail on the right and left side. I'll be adding this sentiment on top of the ice cream cone, but first I'll need to put some foam dimension behind it. I'll flip over the sentiment, lay it on the bottom of the cone. That way I can tell where I need to add some foam dimension. I won't add any foam dimension in the center since that area will sit on top of the ice cream cone. Instead, I'll add a little bit of glue there. I did cut the foam dimension in half so I could add those narrow little pieces. Want to make sure to have good coverage on the back side. Then I'll remove the release paper and adhere the happy birthday sentiment. Next, I'll add a little bit of sparkle to the cherry using scrapbook.com's raspberry pink glitter brush marker. And for a final finishing touch, I'm adding just a little bit of sparkle at the bottom of the ice cream I'm using scrapbook.com's pops of color. This is the glitter unicorn tears. It's a very light pink with lots of sparkle. So there is my finished card, and this is card number six. I love how this turned out. Who wouldn't want a pink ice cream cone for their birthday? Now here's another look at the six cards I made using scrapbook.com's brand new birthday collection. I love the new paper pads, stamps, and dies. Perfect for making birthday cards for all ages. If you are interested in any of the products I used in this video, I do have links in the description box below. Scrapbook.com never disappoints with their fun collections. And every week they have different specials, lots of fun freebies. And I did add a link for their current deals if you want to check it out. I'm always excited to see what collections they'll release next. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.